Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Kiki Fontenot and I work for the LSU Ag Center and I'm going to be speaking with you guys today about legumes or vegetables that are in the family Fabaceae. So I'm standing right next to a legume actually right here. You can see that this is a nice snap bean. These snap beans are being grown in the Student Sustainable Club's garden here on LSU's campus. So that student group planted these beans. I can't take credit for these. But you can see beans and peas and anything in the legume family. So legume families are going to have really, really nice, beautiful flowers. You can see the violet color on this one. Many of you guys are going to be familiar with a couple of plants that you may or may not know are in the legume family. For instance, we know that beans are in the legume family and peas are in the legume family. But did you know peanuts are also legumes? In addition, blue bonnets are anything in the lupine group. So I'm from Texas, so I always remember those are legumes. As well as wisteria. So wisterias are those big, beautiful, sweet smelling vines that stay dormant most of the year and then pop out in early spring with beautiful purple flowers. The thing that's great about legumes is they have two purposes. One, they're edible, right? So we're looking at these long, gorgeous pods right here, and these are what we would consider snap beans. So we would want to harvest them smooth like this, okay? Um, they're edible, but these plants in the legume family also add nitrogen back to the soil. They actually have mycorrhiza, little organisms that live within their roots and around their roots that tie up nitrogen from the atmosphere and bring it into the plant. So you could grow this to eat the pods, like we see here, or you could grow legumes for a cover crop. So what you could do is you could plant them in your garden, start to cut them down when they begin to flower, but not before they begin these immature pods. You would definitely want to take them out if you're using them as a cover crop before they develop pods because that extra nitrogen that their um, roots are assimilating with the mycorrhiza from the atmosphere are going to go into the effort of making this pod. So if this is going to be a green manure or a cover crop for you, till it in before you get to this. Now notice how this legume is kind of mixed with a kukutsa here, but it's growing up way high. There's two types when we're talking about beans. There's bush beans and pole beans. These are pole beans up here on this trellis. And typically they're called pole beans because people would literally put poles into the ground to trellis them up on TP type shapes. Here we have a beautiful archway that this student group created out of cattle panel, which you can see here is holding up these gorgeous snap beans, but it's sturdy enough also to hold up the large kukutsas hanging here. Now we're going to walk around this, this raised bed and I want to show you that in the legume family, particular beans, they also come in bush varieties. Now bush varieties are really great for you guys if you don't want a trellis or you don't want to build a trellis or, or dig those poles into the ground and pull them out every year. Bush beans require no trellising whatsoever, okay? Now we have lima beans, we have snap beans, we have all kinds of beans. What I'm, and I'm gonna recap this when we go inside, but snap beans, think of like a cold snap, right? Snap beans like it a little colder. So we're gonna plant those February through May for the spring crop, and again, mid-August through mid-September for the fall crop. Whereas lima beans, butter beans as people call them, we eat them here with cornbread and rice down in the south, those are gonna be planted when it gets warmer. Okay, so think you live in the south, you like your butter beans, plant it when it's warmer. So we're gonna wait until mid-March to plant those for the spring crop and go through May, and then plant another fall crop sometime between August 1st and September 1st. Now, I like bush beans because you don't have to trellis them, so they're easier. Bush beans are gonna give you a much shorter harvest life than your pole beans, because pole beans, like what we see right here, they have, uh, vegetative apical meristem, so they're going to continue to keep producing, keep producing plants so you harvest over a longer period. Bush beans are a more concentrated harvest in a shorter time. Now let's come up close to these bush beans. What I want y'all to know is the color is kind of limey and that's okay. See how many pods we have down here? We're producing a lot of beans in a small space here and there's a lot of flowers coming down there. Well, we'll produce even more. So I'm not worried about that, this color. When we talk about the legume family, remember they fix their own nitrogen, so you don't need a lot of fertilizer. In general, we only really do pre-plant fertilizer for these. It'd be like three to four pounds per 100 foot row. Now back that down a little bit. We're talking a quarter cup maybe for a standard four by eight foot bed for pre-plant fertilizer. For lima beans, you're not gonna side dress. 
for snap beans, like the ones we saw on the pole over there. Now remember, snaps, when you harvest them, they snap. They're a different type of bean, and we'll talk about this inside too. We would want to side dress these when they start to bloom or they start to trellis up, okay? So on these, we're going to definitely put a little side dress. That means adding a little bit of nitrogen right when they begin to start blooming, but not on your, on your lima beans. Remember I said peas are also in this group? Well, peas, we don't want to side dress those either. Okay, guys, one of the things y'all might be asking a lot of questions about are what kind of insects, what kind of disease am I going to fight with these? I want you to come in close and look at these leaves. Can you see how the leaves look stippled on these beans right here? There's a lot of little white spots in here and lighter green spots. And you might think, oh, did the wind come and brush against these? Or what's going on here? Well, what's going on is mites are feeding on these right now. And mites are gonna be a common insect pest of your beans and your peas. And when you have mites like this in the home garden, the best way to control them is going to be just using a horticulture oil, an all-purpose horticulture oil, or a horticulture soap, because that's gonna smother them out. I want you to notice one other thing. When I come up in these beans, especially back here, I tried this this morning. If I go like this, do you see all these white flies flying out of these beans right now? That's not good. White flies are definitely a garden pest. They're gonna suck on the sap of this foliage too, and they're gonna give us a lot of virus. If they feed on plants with virus, they're gonna bring virus into these beans and we won't be able to save the seeds. How are we gonna get rid of those white flies? This is a tough problem. One, these beans were planted too close together. You need to space appropriately. Beans should be spaced somewhere between two and four inches apart. These were just sown really, really thick maybe as an intentional cover crop for a little while, but now they're starting to produce pods. So we need to space that out a little bit further apart. Then we can use our soaps and our oils, but if you're gonna eat these beans, which is fine, if you, if you, if you use soaps and oils, you can still eat these beans. But if you get to this point, a lot of insecticides we can no longer use because we have to wait you know, to uh, after we apply the insecticide to eat this pod. And the ones that will really kill the white flies sometimes have longer wait time. So what I would do is come in here, and this is a trick I learned from a farmer, and I actually taught this to some teachers. Come in here with um, a yellow poster board and rub it with Vaseline, okay? I would stand on this side with the Vaseline poster board and I would have somebody come from the other side and use a leaf blower like you hear in the background and I would have them blow hard all those white flies and get them stuck to that board. That will at least eliminate or reduce the adult population enough that your horticulture soaps and oils will start to work. The other probably more pesky insect you're going to find in your bean crops are going to be stink bugs. A stink bug is going to have a shield-like shaped body and little skinny legs. And they take their mouth parts and they pierce into the bean right here. And you can see stink bugs have not gotten this one, thank goodness. They pierce into each bean and they suck the juice right out of it. So when you open up this pod, your beans are shriveled and not developed properly. So we want to definitely keep stink bugs away. How are we going to keep them away? Products like bifenthrin or pyrethroids work well, and you usually only have to wait one to three days to harvest after you've sprayed those. So now that we've seen these beans and we've talked about them a little bit, let's go inside and talk a little bit more about edamame and peas and some other crops as well in the legume family. Okay class, we're back here again in the real classroom now. So we, we use our garden as a classroom and we use our classroom as a classroom. We're teaching horticulture and I hope you guys continued this class by actually going out in your yard and planting something because that's where you really learn, not by listening to me, but by doing it yourself. But I want to recap a few things that we talked about outside, especially when we talk about just the beans within the legume family. We spoke about, look here on the board, snap beans, which a lot of people think of as green beans, although you saw outside those snap beans were purple, right? So, but we think of them as like the canned green beans. Snap beans are harvested when they snap and when they are smooth. You're trying to eat the pod. You're not trying to eat the inside beans, so you want to eat it when the pod is not very fibrous and it's smooth. If they get bulgy, let them dry out on the plant and save the seeds for next year. Snap beans, remember the cool snap. They're planted in mid-February through mid-May, and again, August, mid-August through mid-September for your spring and fall crops. And we definitely want to side dress or add a little extra fertilizer to our snap beans when they're growing. 
versus your lima beans, your butter beans. Now remember, butter beans, southern, you know, cornbread, rice, butter beans, it's hot. We want to plant lima, or what some people call here in the south butter beans, when it gets a little warmer. Mid-March through mid-May for your spring crop. Now, if you guys are listening to this and you live in North Louisiana, you probably need to wait till April because it's not going to be very warm mid-March. I said mid-March. It's going to be more warm mid, mid to early April. So in North Louisiana, let's wait till then to plant. And then we're going to do our fall crop because remember they like it a little warmer, August 1st through September 1st. When we harvest our lima beans, remember, we don't eat the pods. We eat just the beans inside, so we want them to bulge. We want those inside seeds to fully form and pop open. So we harvest with a bulge. And remember, on our lima beans or our butter beans, we do not side dress. We're not going to put any extra fertilizer out when they start to bloom, because if you do that, you're going to end up with this huge bushy plant and no beans at all. And that's not really the point, right? We want to eat. So what I want you guys to look at down here is when you go to the store, you're going to have a wide variety of lima beans to choose from. And these are just a few that I have right here. But I want you to notice that when you're looking at the, uh, the packages, it'll tell you either pole bean, like you see here, pole lima, or it'll tell you bush lima. So you know if you need to build a trellis or not just by looking at the package. And most of the time we think of lima beans as being these light lime green colored beans coming out of a can. And you can see here, these are dried, that's why they're white, they would be lime green. But we also have beautiful, like this Jackson Wonder bush lima bean that's speckled and very, very pretty bean right there. Now when we come over to this side of the table, you're gonna see our snap bean selections. Now there's more snap beans than this. There's a lot of beans out there. But again, you're gonna see that the snap beans are gonna tell you if they're pole or if they're bush. Do you trellis them or do you not? And when you look at the beans, you're gonna see that they're a little more elongated than lima beans, and they come in tans, whites. These almost look like black-eyed peas. These are a golden wax. Um, the color of the pot on this one is actually yellow. Um, but you have uh, speckled brown. You have all colors of these beautiful snap beans out there. Now remember, you're gonna use eat these with the pods on them because they're snap beans. Now let's come over here to this table. So outside I was showing y'all beans, but within this legume family, we also have southern peas, okay? Southern peas are delicious. These are gonna be like what you think of as like Mississippi purple hole, right? So they have the long pods. We're gonna want them to bulge a little bit because we're gonna shell these peas for the most part and eat them. And you can see again, there's a wide variety of colors. Crowder peas, cr cream peas, black eyed, pink eyed, um, Dixie leaves, all kinds of colors when it comes to southern peas. Southern peas are going to be like bush type plants. You're not going to need to stake them. You do not want to side dress your southern peas. Treat them like your lima beans. Plant them when it's warm. Do not give them too much fertilizer. Do not side dress your southern peas or else you'll have a beautiful crop and no peas. And I wanted to show y'all two more special legume family members. Now you guys probably eat camellia red beans all the time, or you're eating uh, Blue Runner red beans. Well, here's some nice red kidney bush beans from the hardware store you can see here. You're gonna plant these just like any other bean that we've been talking about today, as well as edamame. Edamame is a great crop. It's becoming more and more popular, and here you can see the seed. Treat these like you treat your lima beans. They do not require trellising. They're very short, warm season beans. Plant them two to four inches apart. You're gonna have a wonderful crop. You guys, I hope you learned a lot today about the legume family. I hope you consider planting these in your garden as a green manure or as an edible crop. And remember, they're high in fiber, high in iron, and high in protein. So they're a great addition to your diet. For the LSU Ag Center, I'm Kiki Fontenot.